Hi, this video is piggybacking on one Stuart posted several days ago about applying cap plastic to a silicone mold. And I'm doing my part now to show you a slightly different way. As I've told my students numerous times, there's more than one way to do just about everything, and applying cap plastic to a silicone mold is no exception. There's alcohol soluble cap plastic, like Super Baldies from Mold Life. And there's acetone soluble cap plastic, like Bald FX from Motion Picture Effects Company. Michael Davey even offers a water soluble cap plastic. For applying, you can use either a single action airbrush like this Pache H, or a double action airbrush like this Iwata Revolution. Now, the Iwata is a gravity fed airbrush and it doesn't hold a lot in the reservoir, so you're gonna have to keep refilling it all the time. And the Pache H is a siphon feed, and the cup that comes with it ordinarily is for right-handed users. I'm a lefty, so that gets in the way. But if you use larger bottles, like these, you can put more cap plastic in there and get your job done. You can also use an HVLP high volume, low pressure spray gun like this Pache. Or you can get something like this monstrous number I picked up at Harbor Freight. It'll hold a lot of material in that reservoir, but it's got a larger connection on the bottom. So make sure you've got the right hoses and adapters for the job. You can also use sponges or a soft brush. I don't recommend using a chip brush because you're likely to have loose bristles get trapped in the cap plastic and then you'll have fun getting them out. It's repairable, but the goal is to create as thin and even a coating of cap plastic as you can for optimal results. Now since Stuart's already done a video showing you the results using an airbrush, an HVLP spray gun, and a soft brush, I won't repeat what he's already done. You can take a look at that video at this link on Stuart's YouTube channel. For my part, in this video, I'll be using a simple pump mist sprayer and an aerosol sprayer. There are all kinds and sizes of pump sprayers. I've chosen this small two ounce spray bottle. I've also got a six ounce spray bottle and a Preval aerosol sprayer with a six ounce bottle. You can find the Preval sprayers at most hardware stores like Ace, Lowe's, and Home Depot. But if you go to the Preval website, you can order directly or find a store near you that carries it. For this demo, I'm using pre-mixed Bald FX cap plastic from Motion Picture FX Company in Burbank, California. It's an acetone soluble cap plastic and it comes pre-mixed, ready to spray, or it comes as a concentrate, which I already showed you, that must be thinned with acetone before spraying. As Stuart mentioned in his video, the ratio should be about six or eight parts acetone to one part cap plastic. For the pump sprayer and the Preval, I'm going to thin the cap plastic even more than the pre-mix to be safe. That's because the pump nozzle and the aerosol nozzle on the Preval sprayer are a fixed size and pressure. With an airbrush, you can adjust both so you can get away with a slightly denser mixture. First, the pump sprayer. The acetone flashes off pretty quickly, so you can get in and do another layer pretty quickly. Now thinning it as much as I did, it's actually coming out of the pump sprayer pretty well. But you're, because it's thinner, you're having to do more layers, you just want to be careful not to overspray and get your cap plastic too thick. Spray some more. Another pass. What's this? Four or five now. A little blow dryer. For 
For this demo, it doesn't really matter how many layers I get on if it gets too thick, because the point is I'm trying to give a comparison between airbrushing, brushing, sponging, and spraying with a pump sprayer and an aerosol sprayer. So now I'm going to set this mold aside and bring in an identical one and we'll use the Preval sprayer for that. Now this is getting a spray a lot more akin to an airbrush, which is a good thing, but I think the airbrush is still more controllable. But it is doing a nice fine spray it's just that we can't control how, how strong the spray is or how much material is coming out. Now with Preval Sprayer, you want to make sure that you're holding it upright because we need to have the, the delivery tube under the liquid or else you're going to get air coming through and it'll spatter. Let's rotate it and get a different angle. Now we're going to bring the pump spray back in and let's, I like to use a toothpick to kind of lift up and see where we are. And that's got nice consistent coverage. And they both look really good. And there you have it, pretty good results. Better than with a brush or a sponge, but maybe not quite as good as, a, as an airbrush. Definitely not as much control. But if you don't have an airbrush or a compressor, I highly recommend giving a pump sprayer or a Preval sprayer a shot. If you want to learn more about making prosthetics, check out our podcast, Battles with Bits of Rubber, on our website, battleswithbitsofrubber.com, or wherever you stream your favorite podcasts. Thanks for watching. Cheers.